Let's try another problem. A, B, C, D are four frictionless tracks with the same starting height of 0.2 meters and the same width at the base. Four identical small blocks are released from rest at the top. Find the speed of each block at the end of track. Again, we will ignore air resistance. In fact, unless a problem specifies or implies that there is air resistance to consider, we will ignore air resistance for that problem. Just like the Tarzan problem, because uh, the angle changes over here, so it can be complicated if we choose to use the forces and kinematics. Now, if the frictionless track is just a straight incline, then we can draw the force diagram and figure out the acceleration. Since the acceleration is going to be a constant, we can use kinematics to find the final speed at the bottom of the incline. But even in this case, conservation of energy will still be easier. So we're going to use conservation of energy and we're going to start with the work energy theorem. The work done by non-conservative forces equals to the change in total mechanical energy. When the block slides down the frictionless track, there are only two forces acting on the block. Say when the block is over here, there will be mg going straight down and the normal force perpendicular to the surface of the track. So mg, of course, is the conservative force. The non-conservative force will be the normal force. How much work does normal force do when the block slides down? Just like the tension in the Tarzan problem, the normal force does not do any work because the normal force at every moment is perpendicular to the displacement. So normal force does not do any work. The work done by the non-conservative forces is zero. So the initial mechanical energy equals to the final mechanical energy. Now initially, the block starts from rest, so there is no kinetic energy at the beginning. Initially, whether it has a potential energy or not would depend on the ground choice. And uh, in this problem, I'm going to choose the lowest point down here at the bottom of the track is uh, the ground. So over there, there is mgy and it will be mg what's the height above ground over there it will be 0.2 meters at the end at the bottom the block is moving with a speed v we do not know we're looking for this speed is there mgy down here the small block will be on the ground so the y is zero which means uh, what we have here is uh, mg times 0.2 equals to 1 half mv squared. Again, the mass would cancel, so we can find the speed to be square root of 4, which is uh, 2 meters per second. Now what about part b? Would anything be different? It would still be the same initial mgy. At the bottom of the track, only kinetic energy. So we have the same final speed, 2 meters per second, for all four tracks, A, B, C, D. Now, what if I release all four blocks at the same time? Which block will reach the end of the track first, second, third, and last? I have this set of tracks. They are kind of like the tracks A, B, C, and D. And I have these four identical steel balls to release from rest. Okay, let's see. Even though all of them should reach the same speed in the end, the ball going down D reaches
reaches the end of the track first, while track A took the longest time. Why do you think this happens? We use the conservation of energy to find the final speed. When we use the law of conservation the way we did, you know, we only looked at the beginning and the end. We don't get the details in between. We did not look at how the height changes at every moment, so we did not have information about the time it takes. But if we look at the details in between, we can see that the track D allows the ball to lose a lot of MGY and gain a lot of kinetic energy, which means a lot of speed, near the very beginning. On the other hand, the ball on track A spends a lot of time being slow before finally picking up speed. Even for tracks B and C, although B has a steeper slope than C, it still loses to C because C starts picking up speed earlier than B. So if we look at just these two, B and the C, right? So in this case, if we only need to find the final speed, conservation of energy is very convenient to use because we don't have to bother to go through the details in between. We only have to look at the beginning and the end. If we want to find the time it takes the block to go down the frictionless track like this, it will be a lot more complicated. When the slope changes, the acceleration changes we will not be able to use constant acceleration motion equations for this problem. So in this course, you don't have to be able to find the exact time, but you should be able to compare the time as we did.